by doing something stupid like that and 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 inciting uh you know a conflict it just doesn't make any sense so i, I, agree. I don't see i agree I don't this see. this is lusitania 2.0 great points thank you for calling in brendan uh let's talk to tom in baltimore then ron john and others go ahead tom Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Jones. I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on what one of your previous callers had stated about the Jets possibly uh, shuttling that craft over a bit. I had thought that uh, since day one that that might be a possibility. I, I had that in mind because when I was a police officer, we would have a lot of local news helicopters figure out from time to time where attack units were operating. When I was in tech, uh, usually we were doing sensitive operations. We didn't want them shadowing us everywhere we went. They were giving away our position. So we would call one of our helicopters to come, and they didn't have to contact them by radio. They would spot them up at night sometimes, or they would just fly by and nudge them. Um, my thinking is if you've got several fighter jets flying aggressively by your plane, you're not going to have to have any radio contact whatsoever, which might be what they had in mind. You're going to steer clear of where those fighter jets are operating the same way the news helicopters would clear out when our chopper would buzz them or spot them up. It makes perfect sense. And you would have no record of any communication telling them to do anything. They would just do it. Wow. What, what does your gut overall tell you is going on here? You know, I'll tell you what, you can't believe anything that you hear from the politicians or the news, or we used to call it in court, a fruit of the poisonous tree. You know, once they tell you and feed you so many lies, you can't take anything that they say as factual or truthful at all. You know, they've done it to themselves. So it's really a guessing game. Uh, it certainly, though, appears that, uh, like you said, uh, you know, we've uh, traditionally not been big fans, this country of Russia, but they certainly seem to be operating in the way that we had always uh, strived to operate. Uh, they're doing things uh, that the United States used to do when, when I was a younger man, and uh, I can't fault them for that. So. You know, right now, the credibility has to go with them. I mean, that's just call it the way I see it. I agree with you. Plus, they don't stand a game from shooting this airliner down. Well, that's it for our news tonight. Now, if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please consider supporting our operation. Of course, one subscription can be shared with up to 11 other people at the same time. Gives you access not only to the nightly news every night, but also to all of Alex Jones's documentaries. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, right after this break, we have Alex Jones' special report on Matt Drudge, how Matt Drudge changed the world. Stay with us. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. It's been more than 16 years since Matt Drudge gave his historic speech at the National Press Club on June 2nd, 1998. At that time, he said that the mainstream media would go bankrupt, that uh, individual bloggers and researchers on the Internet were just as important as the New York Times. The controlled state-run media had a field day making fun of Matt Drudge. But today, their hubris has drained away, and they're no longer as arrogant as they once were. Now we see calls for the FCC to regulate print news and online news. 
and we see establishment publications like Time Magazine, Newsweek, and the New York Times battling to keep from going completely bankrupt and imploding. It turns out pretty much everything that Matt Drudge said in that 40-minute speech has now come true. Well, Matt Drudge is saying a lot of things today that the mainstream media is still laughing at. Why do they laugh at people that have been proven right over and over again? Here are some of the most important moments, in my view, from Drudge's speech. And we're also adding headlines from over the years to show just how much of what he had to say came true. This is something new. This marks the first time that an individual has access to the news wires outside of a newsroom. You get to read all the news from the Associated Press, UPI, Reuters, to the Moro Kane, the Moro Kane uh, Agency French Press and the Chenoa. I'm a personal fan, fan of the Chenoa Press. Uh, and time was, only newsrooms had access to the full pictures of the day's events. But now any citizen does. We get to see the kinds of cuts that are made for all kinds of reasons. Endless layers of editors with endless agendas changing bits and pieces so by the time the newspaper hits your welcome mat, it had no meaning. Now with a modem, anyone can follow the world and report on the world. No middleman, no big brother. And I guess this changes everything. More than 10 years after breaking the Clinton Lewinsky story, Matt Drudge remains more powerful than ever with his website, thedrudgereport.com. Matt Drudge is a legend on the internet. Every journalist and politician in America reads his website on a daily basis. When radio lost out to television, there was anxiety. The people in the radio business were absolutely anxious and demanded government stop the upcoming television wave. Television was very nervous about uh, other mediums coming forward, cable. The movies were, didn't want sitcoms to be taped at movie studios for fear it would take away from the movies. No, television saved the movies. The internet is going to save the news business. I, I envision a, a future where there'll be 300 million reporters where anyone from anywhere can report for any reason. It's freedom of participation absolutely realized. First of all, you disrespected me, this badge, and my department. You understand me? When I'm talking to you, you shut your mouth and you listen. Did I not give you a warning? You gave me a warning. Okay. I have a right in the United States. I know my rights. I don't I give it. Give it. You mean the board? Obviously, your parents don't put a foot in your butt quite enough, because you don't understand the meaning of respect. You see this? Yes, you see this. You I see took this. the board. You have a problem you with it? I have a problem. Then bring your parents down. We'll discuss this. Oh, boy. Go for it. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But it's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't took, we deserve to know? You, you took an under, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you we have public officials you, there I'm sorry. You policy. took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up sir. after. Oh, I'm I sorry. I just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what, I know what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> sir, everything, uh, you, I, 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 don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. You, 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 you have you. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Listen, oh. listen. You go around and and make understandings with people and violate them. You you ambush people on the streets, and that's that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. 
If you want to, you, you can do, you're free American, like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry, nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders come out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three pointer. Woo! What's up, man? How are you doing today, sir? Good. You a uh, citizen? That's my business. Well, it's our business to ask. Are you a citizen or not? You can ask, that's fine. And you have to answer me, or I'll mm -hmm. have to detain you until you can either tell me that you're a uh, Well, I don't have to answer you because I have uh, rights as an American. Sir, go ahead and pull over there or behind that other vehicle if you do me a favor. Nah, no thanks. I'd like to just go on my way. You, you can go on your way as soon as you tell mm -hmm. me if you're a U.S. citizen. Well, you know, I, I didn't know that I have to go around proving that I'm a citizen. Do I need to, like, show my papers like yeah, the Nazis? So this or is immigration I'm not, am I immigrating somewhere? Or yeah, but we're supposed to check on is this Mexico or? This is the United States. Huh? Just answer the question yes or no. Well, well, let me ask you this. You know, is this Nazi Germany now? I have to show my papers? Hmm? Get out of the vehicle. In your apartment. I am in my apartment, sir. Go back inside right now. I am inside. I'm, this is my door. I'm standing right inside my apartment. Sir, I'm inside my apartment. Uh, the First Lady of the United States recently addressed concerns about Internet during a cyberspatial Millennium Project press conference just weeks after Lewinsky broke. She said, we're all going to have to rethink how we deal with the internet. As exciting as these new developments are, there are a number of serious issues without any kind of editing function or gatekeeping function. I wonder who she was referring to. Mrs. Clinton continued, any time an individual leaps so far ahead of that balance and throws a system, whatever it might be, political, economic, technological, out of balance, you got a problem. It can lead to all kinds of bad outcomes, which we have seen historically. We, we are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Would she have said the same thing about Ben Franklin, or Thomas Edison, or Henry Ford, or Einstein? They all leapt so far ahead out that they shook the balance. No, I say to these people, faster, not slower. Create, let your mind flow, let the imagination take over. And if technology has finally caught up with individual liberty, why would anyone who loves freedom want to rethink that? If you're an undersecretary at the Energy Department, and you're doing an interview and you say one thing, you know, during, you could end up uh, being on the front page of Drudge. Anyone saying anything can, um, can get caught up in, in the spin cycle in a way that is very damaging. To, you know, it, it, will, it hurts what we're trying to do on a daily basis, but also is very damaging to that individual person. And we cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. The editor of Civilization magazine, Adam Goodhart, wrote a great op-ed in the New York Times talking about, is this really something new, this type of fast reporting, this competitive, I'm very competitive, I'm more part of the headline generation. He maintains it was a going back to our foundations when the press was found in quite a different atmosphere, when the press would report that the president's mother was a common prostitute brought over by the British Army. Uh, imagine if someone did that now. We have a great tradition of freedom of the press in this country, unpopular press. If the First Lady is concerned about this internet cycle, what would she have done during the heyday when there was 12, 13 editions of a paper in one day. What would she have done with that news cycle? That's the foundation, that's what makes this club great, is the tradition. And I think we have a tradition of, uh, of uh, provocative press. And that I maintain that I'm the new, new face on that, I'll take that for a season.
But a lot of the stuff I do is serious stuff. I was first to report that the encryption was missing from a Laurel satellite, for example.